Okay, so um, today we're going to take a look at a brand new idea, which is called a limit. And uh, this is your first introduction. Calculus, for the most part, you're going to find that the math involved is pretty much the math you've already been doing. But um, calculus is a lot more conceptual. So you really owe it to yourself to know why you're doing something um, and how it works, not just here's step one, step two, step three, here's my answer. Um, you'll find you hit more roadblocks in calculus. You can probably still answer quite a few questions, but conceptually life is a lot easier if you think about it that way. So our first concept is this idea of what a limit is. Now, if you think about this first example that I've listed um, right here, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Is it possible to figure out what the value is at x equals 1? No. What's the problem? Yeah, so if I put in x equals to 1, then what would happen is I'd divide by 0. That's a problem. But um, just to give you an idea of what's actually happening, um, we should look at a picture of this. So, for example, if I put in um, y equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, does that look like a very scary graph to you? If you were looking at this picture and somebody asked you, what do you think the value at x equals 1 is? Would you be able to answer? What do you think it would be? 2. two. So this is our first idea that we want to look at is, mathematically, it is correct that you cannot evaluate this at x equals 1. Everything you know is still true, because we would divide by 0. But we can get as close as we want without actually landing on 1 in order to get really, really close to what looks like the value 2 here. For example, it's defined if I'm over here, right at, say, 1.999999999999999. And you'd probably think that, uh, you know, where would I have to be? How close to x? Well, I'd probably be x equals 0.9999999999, right? I get really, really close. So that's the idea of a limit, is some things that we're trying to solve a problem we can't actually look right where we'd like to, but we want to get as close to that answer as possible. Okay? So um, let me show you a couple of the ideas where this actually happens. Okay? So this is one of the first problems in calculus that we're going to study for the first probably month or two. It's known as the tangent problem. Now, this was uh, probably what Newton was most famous for. He worked on this for quite a lot. Um, did I show you that really boring video, or was that the other block? Oh, oh okay. So anyways, um, there's a quote somewhere in your textbook that Newton is saying, of all the problems I'd want to solve, I'd, you know, this is the one I was, I, I'd really like to know the answer to. And eventually, he did find his answer. But um, he wanted to know, what is the, the equation for the tangent line? So a line that touches the graph in just one place. So what you guys have done so far is, you know, in other grades, you would have looked at this as um, the change. You'd be able to calculate the slope here. So in this example, well, take a break. Okay, so I think before the fire drill where we had left off was, uh, whoops, just a second here. All right, so again, I, I uh, hopefully that's the end of our interruptions. So where we left off talking about, um, if we were to think of this slope, um, the example in this graph is a population of flies, um, and somebody has plotted out all their, what they've recorded, and it looks like this picture. And then they've taken a measurement that you would have done, say, in grade 10, where you said 22 days has gone by, and it's gone from 150 flies up to 340 flies. So that means the population has grown by 190 flies in 22 days. So 190 we increased in 22 days. So even though you're used to thinking of the slope as you know, rise over run, it has you know, more important applications when we think of it as a rate of change. Um, 190 flies increasing in 22 days, that tells us more information about it than just the slope is um, 8.6 flies per day. Now, this uh, also gives us um, 8.6 flies per day, but that's the average rate of change because on this day, um, as it moves along, you can see that sometimes the graph went up faster than other times, like here, where it's starting to taper off. So some days it went up faster than 8.6, some days it went down lower than 8.6.
So the idea of a tangent pr uh, problem being important is that tangent lines can tell us at any instant what's happening to that population. So for example, if this line here had a uh, slope of 9, that would tell us that at that exact instant, the population of flies was changing by 9 flies per day, at that instant. Okay, so that's one thing we're going to look at. And we'll talk more about that as we get into uh, what's called a derivative. But uh, rate of change is very important uh, study in calculus. So here's uh, why that tangent problem is, is something that we need a limit in order to, to do. If we were to think about the fly problem, problem, excuse me, the fly problem, this is how it would look. So if you think about it, this, this first part here, it looks like some mumbo jumbo, but um, this is um, f of b, this is f of a, and then this is right here, this is b minus a. Good afternoon, John. Another interruption, just hang on. Okay, so as the, uh, this here, this is what you know of normally for slope. You take two points, A and B, you take the value at the function, subtract those, the value at the two points. Now, if we simplified it, we get down to this expression, and the way I get from a secant line to a tangent line is um, <clears throat> I go from two points to one. So here where I have... Um, one, sorry, um, one, two points. I want to start moving these points so that they end up on just one spot. But we can't do that because if we did, then this change would equal zero because there's no difference between the two points. So we can't actually get the value right on there if we were to substitute in numbers. We have to look as we get very, very, very close. So I'll show you a couple of illustrations of what it means then as the tangent problem. Um, here's the two points, like as I was saying, and we call this a secant line when there are two values like that. That's what you know before you came to class today. As those points move, this point becomes this point, and then it becomes this point, and this point, and finally it gets so close that you can see it actually makes the tangent line at that point. Okay? So... <coughs> There's a lot more that's going to come on tangent lines and this, this idea. But for now, what you need to think of a limit is it's useful because there are some problems which we can't find the answer where we want it to exist because we divide by zero or we maybe take the square root of a negative or we do something that we're not allowed. The limit is the idea that we get very, very close in order to find an answer. Okay, so let's just... Uh, um, actually, and I do have a cool uh, little applet here. Let me... Uh, Show you, where did it go? Um, there it is. So there's the, uh, there's the two points, and you can see the green line is the line that has two dots, one that you would have done with your slope formula before today. As I move that green point, as I move it along, it starts to look more and more like that tangent line in red. And eventually, as those two end up getting so close together, you can see they're almost identical, and at some point, they're basically the same. So this is the idea that we're going to look at. Okay. So the uh, first limit that we just talked about, as that change between the points um, approaches zero, the secant line becomes a tangent line. And this is a huge idea. We've only talked about it for five minutes, but it's a huge idea, and we're going to spend quite a bit of time um, on it in our uh, studies for calculus. And um, if we take a little, little lower, we'll actually take a look at calculating some limits. So here's the notation for a limit. Um, like everything in math, there's a lot of shorthand here. This thing here, what it says is this is the limit just a second. This is the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay. So for now, when you think of a limit and you're wondering, how do I calculate this weird notation? Well, if you know that there are no problems, then the limit can be just the value that you're approaching. So for example, as I approach x equals 3, what kind of graph is this? 
Anybody recognize that? Yeah, it's a parabola. Are there any problems or crazy weird things that could happen on a parabola? Like you don't jump into imaginary numbers or divide by zero or any weirdness? No, there's no problems. Every number I put in, I'll get a number back. So in that case, we can use strategy number one, which is just to substitute directly into the value. So for this, I know that there are no problems when I substitute. So it's going to be 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 1. So that's 16. Okay, so at this point you might be asking yourself, what's the point of a limit then if all you're doing is substituting the value? Well, remember, I said there's, there's times when we can't substitute the value. Um, so when does a limit exist? To be clear about its definition, um, what, we need, what we mean is a limit exists provided we can get as close as we want without actually touching and both sides have the same value. So I'll show you some pictures of exactly what I mean. But um, what it means is as I look at the graph, the worst case scenario when the limit um, will still exist is there's a hole at that one particular spot. But everything else up to it, I can get as close as I want, and it is defined. So conceptually, remember, a limit means we don't have to be on the point itself, but we have to be able to get as close as we want. It would still work if we wanted to go within a billionth of a, a decimal or a trillionth. It would still work, okay, as close as we want. So. Again, it's, it's a weird concept when you first hear about it. So we're going to take a look at a couple of graphs. Um, if you have your graphing calculators, you should bring those out. Um, we're going to look at two examples here. The first one, um, this here you can do with your TI-83. And um, you can use your trace button and you can zoom in to see what's happening. I'm going to show you it on an applet so that I can project it up here for you. But uh, let's take a look. The first one is natural log x minus natural log 2 over x minus 2. If we were to substitute this in, what we would get is natural log 2 minus natural log 2 over 2 minus 2. So this is an interesting limit because we don't really know what happens around 0 over 0 without looking more closely. Okay, 0 divided by 0 can be one of those weird situations.